All right, welcome to everyone to today's uh, virtual college exploration for all of North and South Carolina um, students. It's being sponsored by our organization called CACRO, the Carolinas Association of Collegiate Registrars and Admissions Officers. So today, um, I wanna send out some housekeeping items to make sure all of you know that's on the call today, um, how to ask your questions. You will see the Q&A button to type in your questions to the presenters and they are monitoring that as they go through the presentation and they will decide, of course, when they choose to answer your question. But know that you can ask still through the Q&A. Um, your camera and your microphone are off um, for all of you that are attending and it's gonna stay that way. So the panelists can't see or hear you. Um, so just know that uh, that's the way we set this up going forward with our college exploration. Um, but make sure you ask the questions. Don't leave today without asking your questions. Um, we have tons more of these sessions, these panels and individual college information sessions throughout the next couple of weeks. So make sure you're going to our website at CACRO, C-A-C-R-A-O dot org to take a look at the rest of the uh, titles for the presentations and the colleges that plan to present. And remember, after today, all of our sessions, the one you're listening to today, and any of the other sessions that we'll have coming up um, will be recorded, and we will post them again to CACRO's website. So um, thank you for participating. And at this point in time, Rachel, I'm going to turn it over to you so you can grab the screen. All right. And Catherine, if you want to go ahead and all right. Yes, absolutely. Well, welcome everyone. We are thrilled that you're here with us. Happy Thursday afternoon. Thanks for spending this afternoon with us just to learn more about um, this ju Junior Jumpstart panel. It is basically your post-secondary planning journey. Um, we are all representatives from undergraduate admissions offices, um, including East Carolina University, the University of Alabama, UNC Charlotte, and also UNC Wilmington. So um, I want to first kick us off with just a brief overview of what we'll cover today, and then each of us are going to introduce ourselves so that you just know a little bit more about who you're hearing from today. Um, so first, we want to start by having you all just consider your options that are available to you, not strictly just the four year institution traditional pathway, but just various options that really might be a good fit for you to consider as well. Um, we really also want you to be to come into this open minded because of the various pathways that you could consider and just also an open mind about how to plan for your your future ahead as you look for, um, you know, your future college home. Um, we also want to provide a really nice helpful timeline. But before that, we also want to kind of talk through what do colleges look like? You know, what does it all uh, look like? This is a lot to take in. So we kind of want to take you step by step and to think internally um, before you're able to jump into an actual timeline. And we'll leave you, we'll leave you with that resource too. Um, but before we dive in, we'd like to just briefly introduce ourselves, um, who we are, also what our roles are, and what institutions we're representing. Good afternoon. My name is Sarah Baskaran and I am a regional recruiter for East Carolina University. I work in Wake County and I cover a few of their surrounding counties around Wake. Um, we have other recruiters um, around the state, which will take care of you if you're from other locations. But if you're from the Wake County area, I'll be taking care of you. Um, I will jump on later on in the presentation. I will also help facilitate questions at the end. So please feel free to put those in the chat box. We would love to hear from you. Good afternoon, my name is Rachel Hopewell and I am a regional um, admissions recruiter for the University of Alabama in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Um, and I reside in the Raleigh area and cover Eastern North Carolina for the University of Alabama. And hey everyone, I'm Katherine Mason. I'm an Assistant Director of Admissions for Regional Recruitment at UNC Charlotte. Um, I am based in Wake County as well, and I work with all students, pretty much whether they are freshmen, sophomores, juniors, seniors, or transfers um, interested in UNC Charlotte, um, ranging from the greater Research Triangle area all the way to the coast. 
Hi everyone, my name is Ashley Carroll and I'm one of the senior admission coordinators at UNC Wilmington. I also am based in Wake County. I live in Raleigh, so if any of our students in our webinar this afternoon live in Wake County, then I am going to be your main point of contact. But of course, we also have an entire staff of first year counselors who are more than happy to help you. Um, but thank you guys so much for being here with us this afternoon. Okay, perfect. So like I said, first we want to just kind of dive into what your options are. Um, we encourage you to keep an open mind, as I said, because there is the traditional four-year pathway, but there's also many other options to consider that might be a really great financial fit and also best fit for you based on what your future profession might be. Um, that could be, of course, a, a four-year college, but it could also be a two-year college. So um, whether that's vocational, te vocational technical college, or um, uh, just a nearby community college or a traditional four-year college at the public or private level. You could also go into the workforce and get that um, experiential learning you know, firsthand. Um, you could also go into the military and there's also very various military academy options to consider as well. Um, we're going to go into a little bit of self-exploration next, um, but basically self-exploration is just learning about what you're interested in, where your talents are, um, what you think you might eventually want to do based on those talents, what you like to do, what you don't like to do, just kind of exploring, you know, what your, your overall interests are because you, you know that saying, you never want to work a day in your life um, because you're, what you're doing is really fueled by your passion. So um, it's really important just to start with that, with self-exploration, self-knowledge, um, and then from there, you're going to really research all of those various options that you'll have. Okay, so in terms of self-exploration, I want you to first start with a few very important questions for yourself. Um, first of all, what is your dream job or um, do you have various dream jobs? Um, I know I wanted to actually go in education since the day I was asked that in elementary school. I remember actually writing out um, or drawing a picture of myself in education. Um, and so since then, I love seeing that come full circle that I get to do that and work with students. Um, but kind of think back to that timeline when, where you've always just maybe dreamed of doing something that you enjoy, something that brings you joy, um, and something that maybe will allow you to give back to your community as well. Um, so really think internally about that, but also have you taken any classes related to these passions of yours, these particular skills? Do you really find joy in, um, in various math classes or engineering or technical classes? Or what about writing and English? Um, you can think about some of the classes that you've taken in high school and really think about if those might go down a specific path. Um, from there, I, we also want to encourage you to consider a lot of virtual experiences out there. Um, you know, virtual experiences are, of course, just like today, really the options that are available because of uh, this global pandemic, but really the virtual experience out there, uh, virtual experiences out there are a great way for you just to stay engaged, um, even once you're able to visit college campuses again. Um, and virtual experiences are things like um, tuning into a college's information session, but also um, going on virtual campus tours, um, and then also just kind of uh, finding out what professions are out there. Um, in addition to that, we would really encourage you to reach out to some resources that are readily avail available to you directly at your high school, like your school counselor and your career development coordinator. Those those people are resources, incredible resources at your high school, and they are there to help you really navigate that path in terms of what career might be the best fit. Um, as the, really as the um, economy changes, sometimes different types of professions and titles will change out there, so they can really kind of keep you up to date on what your interests are and how that might match with um, some of the available professions out there. And then next, after speaking with some of your mentors, um, school counselors, career development coordinators, we really want to consider um, you to consider job shadowing, um, also maybe some doing some summer camps, gaining experience, whether that's working um, as a school counselor um, or a, a, a summer counselor or working um, through just a job shadowing option, working with other people in the profession that you might be considering. Um, also taking some um, online quizzes to learn a little bit more about your academics and where that might lead into a profession, and mind mapping. Now this is from Georgia Tech Admissions. Um, mind mapping is an exercise that really allows you to take on one big idea and then kind of break it down into smaller categories. And we highly recommend doing exercises like this. Um, and in this case, you could start 
start with something like maybe a future job and then kind of break it down into smaller categories about how that might lead into um, maybe a future major and then maybe even a future um, college or career option from there. All right. Um, so again, like Catherine said, we are going to encourage you to keep an open mind. Um, there are a lot of excellent pathways out there, um, including two-year colleges, military, et cetera. Um, but all of us do represent four-year institutions. And so our focus today is going to be on that. So for the rest of our presentation, it is going to kind of focus in on that. Um, a lot of the graphics on our slides are coming from the Georgia Tech College Selection Guide. And so um, one of our last slides is going to list some of our favorite resources. Um, I encourage you all to go ahead and Google Georgia Tech College Selection Guide. It's um, something that they put out just this fall um, and just print it out and do that mind mapping um, activity that was just on Catherine's last slide. Um, and then this is the second activity. Um, all of you as juniors probably can already sit down and do this next activity. Just write down some of the schools that you're already currently thinking about or are interested in. So go ahead and put those on there. Um, the next step is what majors are you already interested in? What are, you know, one to five majors that you've thought about? Um, so put that in section two on this graphic. Um, and so then you have to check to see, do the institutions that you're interested in offer those majors? Um, so that's where this college research piece is really gonna get in um, during your junior year. Um, and later in the, the presentation, Ashley is gonna talk a little bit more um, about ways you can kind of figure that out. Um, by the end of your junior year, you wanna try to get your college list down to three to six schools is a healthy number. Um, I know a lot of students will apply to more than six, but definitely um, three, and I'll go over my rule of three um, in a couple of slides. Um, some factors to consider um, and just some other resources to kind of help you with this process. Um, there are search engines out there. Um, I always told my students, and in, in addition to being um, a college admissions recruiter, I also used to be a high school counselor. And so I always told them to look at some of these um, online search engines like Big Future and CFNC.org. Um, you can go in there and just start simple. Put down the academic programs that you're interested in or the colleges that you're interested in um, and make sure that they have them. And so that's one of the biggest thing. I know for us as four-year institutions, we'll get asked about you know, majors like cosmetology and dental hygiene, which those are really great programs, but a lot of those are two-year programs that we don't offer, um, but they're great jobs and great um, pathways to pursue. So, but you've got to know that that's not going to be something that we offer at our institutions, but that there are great programs and you'll, you'll pursue those elsewhere. Um, I know nursing isn't something that you're going to find at every institution. So if you want to be a nurse, make sure you're applying to a school that has nursing as a major. And then also, um, there's a lot of really unique majors out there that you're not going to even be aware of as a junior in high school. And so that's where we're hoping that by attending panels like this and then taking the next step after this week um, and either attending our virtual sessions through CACRO or our virtual high school visits um, through your high school counseling offices, that you'll start to learn about some of those unique uh, majors like at Alabama we have actuarial sciences we have a design your own major program um, at an institution I used to work at they had a program called intelligence studies those are probably all things you've never heard of um, that are really awesome job opportunities um, other factors that you want to consider location um, do you want to be close to home do you want to be further away from home do you want to be in a city do you want to be in a smaller location um, size. What do you think? Are you interested in being at a bigger school? Are you interested in being at a smaller school? Do you know? Um, and keep an open mind. You might not know that. Um, also, keep an open mind in terms of cost. Um, cost is definitely something you want to be aware of, um, but also know that it is the sticker price. It's like 
when you go to a car dealership and you're looking at a car, there's a sticker price on the window. Um, usually it's not what you end up paying in the end um, and know that. So when you're looking at schools, the public schools um, in state are probably going to have the lower sticker price to start with in comparison to your private schools or your out of state schools. Um, but don't deter that from applying to those schools. Um, you won't know the true cost of a school until the spring of your senior year, but I think it's good to be mindful of cost, have those conversations with admissions officers and with your families and know that that's going to play a role in your decision. Um, but just keep an open mind and don't rule out applying to those schools either. Um, other things that you need to think about in this process are your statistics. Um, and so I am a former athlete when I was in high school. Um, I knew what my stats were. I played softball and I was a swimmer. So I knew what my 50 freestyle time was and I knew what my batting average was. Um, but I also needed to know what my academic statistics were. I needed to know what my GPA was and I needed to know what my SAT or ACT score was. Um, so you need to know what your statistics are. Um, so right now in the fall of your junior year, what is your weighted GPA? And what is your unweighted GPA? If you don't know the answer to that, you definitely need to email your school counselor and figure that out. Um, you probably haven't had the opportunity to test yet. Um, testing is something we'll talk about before the end of this presentation. Um, and obviously this is a different year with COVID. Um, but it's always good to kind of have an idea of the test scores. Um, and so we'll let you know college stats too. Um, as far as like improving your stats, you need to know um, what your GPA is so that you can compare it to what a college's average GPA is. Um, and then how do you improve it? You still have time. At the beginning of your junior year, you still have eight semesters until you enroll in college to improve that GPA. Um, however, don't make the mistake that I've seen some students that they're like, oh my gosh, my GPA isn't where I, I want it to be. That means I need to go take all AP and honors classes. Um, that's the only way that I can improve it. And that's not the case. You want to challenge yourself as much as possible while still giving yourself the schedule that allows yourself to earn the most A's and B's um, possible. So keep that in mind. Um, but use this infographic again from that Georgia Tech College Selection Guide. Write down those colleges that you're thinking about again, and then start trying to find their stats. Try to find their average GPA, their average SAT and ACT scores. And also, I love that they put on there their deadlines because that's also stuff that you need to know by the end of your junior year. Um, so let's talk about my rule of three. Um, and this will also play into um, the next slide, which Ashley will talk about and will I get in. Um, so to kind of make things easier next year in your senior year, I told you I want your list of schools that you want to apply to to be three to six. Um, will you get in? If you follow Rachel's rule of three, you will. You apply to three schools, one being your reach school, your dream school. Whatever your dream school is, apply. Um, if you don't apply, you'll always regret and you'll always wonder, could I have gotten in? So go ahead and apply, all right? Then, because you're going to know what your stats are and you're going to do this research this year, and you're gonna you know, know um, a school that you meet their averages, find a school that you match their averages. That still doesn't guarantee that you're gonna get in, but you're in the ballpark, again, using my sports analogies. And then you're gonna have a backup school, a school that you're overqualified for, but if you had to go there, even if it was just for a year, and then you transfer to your dream school, um, but you know you can get in because you're overqualified, if you have, three schools and you match all three, um, that should make your senior year a little bit easier. Now, a story with that, when I was a high school counselor, my very first year as a high school counselor, I told all of my students that. I told all my juniors during junior conferences. I told all my seniors during senior conferences. And I had a senior who only applied to two schools and she was a great student. She had over a 4.0 GPA and she applied to Duke that was her number one choice. 
and her backup school was UNC. UNC is not a backup school. Um, and I, you know, I had told her Rachel's rule of three. Um, well, she applied early decision to Duke and she came into my office in tears in early January and her mom was on the phone and emailing me in early January because she did not get in early decision to Duke. And then she had to wait until the end of January to hear it from um, UNC if she had gotten in. Now, because you guys are gonna do your research, you're gonna learn that a lot of us have scholarship deadlines in December. So this student with over a 4.0 GPA who only applied to two schools, um, both of which are kind of at that reach level, she didn't give herself any of those middle level or backup schools. And so she missed a lot of opportunities and she missed having that you know, safe experience and she missed out on a lot of scholarship opportunities. Now it's not a perfect story because she did get into UNC and I have a degree from UNC so I feel like I can talk about them. <laughs> um, but um, she did get into UNC in the end, but it was a lot of stress for her and her family. So follow my rule of three um, and it'll make for a less stressful senior year for you. Um, I'm gonna let Ashley go in a little bit more to stats in your story when um, we get to her slide. And then I'm just gonna throw these stats up there um, since all of us represent our institutions. Um, you guys can read those, take a screenshot of them, but it gives you um, just kind of a look at our stats, but know that we are more than meets the eye um, and so are you. You're more than meets the eye, you're also a story and I'll let Ashley explain that on the next slide. All righty, thank you so much, Rachel. So at this point in your college search, it might feel pretty overwhelming. You have so many choices. You just saw our averages and sometimes that can be a little bit intimidating. So you might be asking, will I even get into a college? Short answer is yes, you will absolutely get into a college. The longer answer is we have in this country over 5,000 colleges and universities. There are over 200 or so of those in the state of North Carolina, whether those are two year or four year public, private, we have a lot of options in our state. Um, so as long as you, A, graduate from high school, B, you follow Rachel's rule of three, um, and I'm gonna add in a, a third caveat here. C, if you talk with admission counselors, you will find your future home and or your future path. So um, we are all here to help you, um, whether that is coming to our institution or maybe trying to figure out where you should go next. So on this slide, we go over what sort of criteria colleges look for. And colleges fall on a spectrum of how selective they are in looking at students for admission. Some of them are not quite as selective. That is not a negative thing whatsoever. They're just casting a wider net to bring in more students or um, more diverse students. So these schools are still really wonderful educational opportunities. And typically they will ask for an application and your official high school transcript. Schools that are more selective or most selective, so maybe some private institutions or your Ivy Leagues, um, they have a longer list of criteria and the ones on the right hand side of the screen, those are just some examples. So the more selective schools, they may or may not require all of these. Um, they will always require an application. Um, typically, they will require an application fee and your official high school transcript. Some of them, most of them, will require an official SAT or ACT score. Again, this year it's a little bit different with COVID, so all of the public institutions in North Carolina have gone test optional this year, and many colleges in the, in the country as well have gone test optional. Some may require essays, letters of recommendation, an interview, SAT subject tests, and then sometimes if you are applying for a specific major, maybe art or music or theater, dance, things like that, you might need to provide a portfolio or um, do an audition. And then lastly, um, any sort of military academics, there, you might need some nominations or um, there might be some physical requirements, things of that nature. So we have put together an 11th grade college planning timeline for you all. And this is, a, it's kind of a rough draft and we want you guys to edit it as you feel is necessary. But being in our position, we're able to kind of see what works for many students. So this semester, it's a little bit more broad. It's not quite as month by month, um, but 
more of some suggestions for you all. Number one, creating a specific email address that is only for your college search for those college portals, the prospective student portals for Common App, for CFNC, your correspondence with your admission counselors. We highly recommend that you create an email account just for college. And it can be something as simple as your name, college at gmail.com, and that's it. So you know that that email account is where all of your college information goes to, and you can keep it in one specific place. So around this time of the year, you should be reaching out to your high school counselor to take the PSAT if it is safe. Um, we definitely want to reiterate that we do not want you to feel pressured to take the PSAT or the ACT or the SAT um, and put your health or your safety or a loved one's health or safety at risk. So please know, only do this if it's safe. We also uh, encourage you all to reach out to your school counselor regarding any virtual college visits or college fairs. This is a great example here, but also tell your counselor maybe some of the schools that you're interested in and you all can find out what sort of virtual experiences those colleges are offering. Next month, again, if it is safe, uh, we encourage students to go ahead and take the PSAT at your high school. Of course, for our North Carolina students, this has been moved to January. Next, we encourage you to know your stats. So those the GPA, the SAT, ACT, and work on developing that that short college list. So again, Rachel's rule of three or adding up to six schools on your list, that is really where we would recommend students start. And then lastly, by the end of October, we would recommend attending at least one virtual college visit, but really aiming for three to six, especially trying to cover those colleges that are on that list of schools you're interested in. In the winter time, when you guys are kind of slowing down um, a little bit, we still encourage you to work on your list, maybe start to narrow it down a little bit as you begin doing your research and you've said, okay, I definitely know I want to go to a smaller private institution. That's really going to help narrow down that list into um, a smaller list of options because eventually you need to have one school on that list. Uh, we encourage students to continue to contact the undergraduate admissions offices. Most schools, if not all of them, will have a student mailing list or a prospective student portal. And once you create an account, you are automatically placed on their mailing list. So you'll receive information regarding open houses, applications, reminders, things like that. Uh, plan and register to take the SAT or the ACT the same semester you're taking math, again, if safe due to COVID. And then lastly, start planning your college tours and your open house events. So most of our admissions offices are currently working on some virtual opportunities for students for tours and open houses. So visit those schools websites, see what upcoming events they have. Most of them will send you an email if you are already on their mailing list. So that's just another incentive to go ahead and sign up for mailing list. Um, but if you're not safe attending anything in person, there are always going to be virtual opportunities available for students. All right, so I'm going to take over from here and talk a little bit more about the timeline starting in the spring. I'm going to repeat a lot of what Ashley has said earlier, just um, because it's something that you're going to continuously be working on. So it's not a strict timeline, just something to keep in mind. Um, but definitely start taking the SAT or ACT by, before the end of your school year if, again, safe to do so due to COVID. We know that things are changing. Um, and again, the recommendation to take it while you're taking your math class is just so that you have all of those things fresh in your mind uh, because the math portion of either of those exams um, do tend to trip students up sometimes if they don't have those things uh, fresh in their brains. We definitely suggest that you plan to attend some college fairs in March or April and take at least one official campus tour. And I would add to this, take one official college campus tour of each of the three to six schools that are on your list. Um, we know that this year due to COVID, a lot of those things are virtual and that it's really difficult to get a true sense of what a college campus might be like through those virtual opportunities, but it's better than nothing. And there's, there's no substitute for standing on a campus and breathing their air and seeing the students and seeing the environment. Um, so if you can, if the colleges are open, if it's safe, all of these caveats still apply, um, try and get to those campuses and take those tours if at all possible. That is really the best way to know if a college is a good fit for you or not, if you feel at home when you walk on that campus. 
again, want to work on getting your list down to those three to six schools. Um, by spring, you should probably have that list pretty narrowed down. Um, there may be four or five on your list, but we definitely want to make sure that you, you get that list down um, so that it's a manageable amount because it's a lot to keep track of with GPAs and test scores and deadlines and scholarships. So the less that you have on your list, the more likely you are to hit all of those deadlines and the less likely you are to miss something important. Um, we suggest that you search for Common App essay prompts for the year that you are going to apply. Um, so, or I'm sorry, for, for this year and see if you can write one of those during your English class. That will be a really good way to get your head around what a college essay will really look like for you. Do some research on some possible summer opportunities and explore your um, interests or your colleges, do camps, um, do an internship. Another thing that I think is a great thing to do is to talk to professionals in the field. So if you wanna be a nurse, you wanted to be a nurse your entire life, you just know nursing is absolutely what you wanna do. Go talk to some nurses. Talk to them about what their day is like. Talk to them about what their favorite part of their job is. Talk to them about what the most challenging part of their job is. That way you have a true picture of what that career field is going to look like for you um, and not just what you see on Grey's Anatomy. Um, so definitely talk to those people. And then start thinking about what teachers you want to ask to write a recommendation letter for you. Um, you could go ahead and ask them if you wanted to. They may not get it to you right away. They're probably gonna be working with some 12th grade students, um, but just let them know, put it on their radar that they've made an impact on you and you would like them to write that letter for you. In the summer, we definitely say that you should attend a summer, a summer camp or college campus tours. Again, kind of repeating ourselves, get that list down to three, um, research all of your admissions deadlines, scholarship deadlines for all the schools that you plan to apply to. Our websites are going to be great resources for this but your best resource are the people that are on this call right now, the admissions counselors at your institutions that you're interested in. That is our job is to talk to you, to give you information, to connect with you. So find who your counselor is at the university that you're interested in. Shoot them an email, shoot them a text, call them, set up a virtual appointment with them. Um, do something to connect with that person to, so that they can have a face to go with your name. Um, and that will also help you when that application comes through um, so that they, they know who you are, they know a little bit about you other than just your name on a page. Um, again, if you can't visit everyone, we completely understand that, especially in the time of COVID. So try to attend virtual information sessions if you can. Um, and then a lot of applications open up in August. So go ahead and get those applications in. Getting them in early is always a good thing. Again, because we have all of those deadlines for scholarships and other opportunities, um, it will not hurt you to get that application in early. And many of, um, many of us will allow you to replace things. So like if you've taken your SAT um, and you take it again and get a better score, you can send in a new score. A lot of schools will let you do that. So do your research on that too, just to be sure um, that you're putting your best foot forward. But that's something you can talk to your counselors about too. So some of our favorite resources, um, there was a question put in the um, Q&A about the mind mapping website and if we could repeat that. So all of the graphics or the majority of the graphics today did come from that Georgia Tech College Selection Guide. It is linked here um, and I really, really encourage you to check that out. Um, it is fantastic at just helping you think through what your college experience is going to look like and um, just kind of really helpful tips on how to narrow down your search and those kinds of things, because we know it can be really overwhelming. Um, your first line of defense is going to be your school counselor, your admissions counselor. Ask questions. That is what we are all here for. You don't know what you don't know, and you don't know it until you ask. So please ask those questions. Um, we are not writing down your questions and saying, oh, they asked a silly question. I'm going to keep that against them when it comes to um, them applying to my school. That's not how it works. We want to help you. We want to take care of you. So ask your school counselor. Ask us. Um, that's, that's why we have a job. We want to be there for you. Some other great resources are College Board. Um, they have a great scholarship search. They have a great college search. CFNC also has great resources for different colleges and for different scholarships. 
um, Big Future again. And then um, Khan Academy is a great resource for students that are interested in um, just getting a little bit more academic help in certain classes, whether it be your AP classes or um, doing some test prep. And all of that is a free resource online for you. So this is us. These are the contact information for your presenters today. Please reach out to us and ask us any questions that you have after today. Um, we are more than happy to help. And if you have any questions for us to answer live right now, please go ahead and put those in the Q&A. We have about 10 minutes left in our presentation, so we would love to connect with you um, if there is anything that we can do. It looks like we had one come through. Um, yes, this session is going to be recorded and it will be on the CACRA website, so you will be able to access that recording there. Another question is, how can we play a sport in college if we don't go to a school that gets a lot of recruiters? That is a great question. Um, I think it will depend on your institution, but I am going to defer to the big guns in the room and uh, have Rachel at Alabama answer this question. Um, there actually might be some sessions later today or tomorrow about playing college sports through CACRO. So I encourage you to go um, Google CACRO, um, C-A-C-R-A-O, um, and on um, high school, or just shoot me an email and I'll send that over to you. Um, but they might do a whole session on college athletics. Um, but check, check that out, because um, that's a whole other webinar. Um, but definitely something to pursue as well. Another question that came through is, can you tell me the application fee for each of your schools? So I'll start with that. At ECU, our application is $75. We do accept fee waivers and we will be participating in CFNC free application weeks this year. Um, so that is a great way to get that fee waived. Yes, we for can Alabama, um, our application fee is $40. Um, we accept the NACAC fee waiver, um, which you can get on the NACAC website and your school counselor does have to endorse that. And we also waive application fees for military um, families. So if your parent um, is a former or current military member, we will also waive your application fee. Yeah, great question. And um, at UNC Charlotte, the fee is $75 for the application. Um, we do accept a variety of fee waivers too. Um, we accept the ACT fee waiver, College Board, NACAC, and Common App as well. At UNCW, the fee waiver is $80 this year, and we also accept a variety of fee waivers, NACAC, ACT, SAT, or an email from your counselor saying that you or your family have financial need. Um, but unfortunately, we will not be participating in the free application weeks this year. Thank you, ladies. Um, so the next question is, are there scholarships that I can apply to as a junior? If so, where can I apply to them? So the answer is yes, there are a few, um, but for the most part, your scholarship opportunities are going to come during your senior year and into your freshman year. Um, but some of those resources, actually, Rachel, would you mind going back the, on the presentation, just back one slide? Um, the CFNC website that we had listed there, um, and then College Board, all of those are great places to go ahead and start looking for scholarships. So even if you can't apply for them this year, it's still good to have them on your radar so that you can know that you would be able to um, apply for them next year. Um, does anybody have anything to add to that? Yes, Rachel, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, also as you're researching every college, that's another great question. You wanna ask us um, what you need to do to be considered for our institutional scholarships. For some of us, you may automatically be considered. For some of us, it may be a separate application. For some of us, we may have merit scholarships. And so that's another great question as you're doing your college research. Um, and then that's also something great to ask your school counselor, college counselor, college advising court member, or career development coordinators at your high school um, are local and regional scholarships. That's another great source of money. But like Sarah said, um, you won't really start applying for those until your senior year of high school. Um, but on a lot of your high school websites, you'll be able to look for those right now. 
Um, like Leesville Road High School, where I used to work as a, a high school counselor, they keep their um, scholarship bulletin archived. And so if you go on their high school student services website, you can look at them from last year and see what all the local and regional scholarships were. Um, and Wake County public school system um, keeps a list. And I think right now they have 307 local and regional scholarships up there. Um, and that's a really great source of money. But again, um, not until your senior year. So. And I also have one more resource. I use this when I was in high school. Again, just for seniors, but just keep this in the back of your head for next year. It's called FastWeb, and that stands for Financial Aid Search Through the Web. They have over, I think it was 100, or not 100, 1.5 million scholarships, and it totals like over $3 billion. And scholarships are, it's all free money. You do not have to pay that back. So um, any sort of scholarship that you have to apply for, it's going to take time. It's going to take effort and work, but y'all, like people are getting $35,000, $50,000 scholarships. Like that is, that can be your year's tuition and fees at some schools. So um, just keep that in the back of your head, do some perusing, see what scholarship applications you want to fill out, and um, hopefully you can get some money. One more thing, sorry, um, <laughs> that College Board Opportunity Scholarship Program, um, I'm on Twitter, and if you follow the College Board, they actually had a tweet today about that, about making your college list. They're like giving away a $500 college scholarship for doing your college list today. So there's scholarships out there too, just for doing some of the activities that we mentioned today as well. Awesome. That is a lot of really great information. So thank you guys for, for chiming in on that. Um, I think the, the next question will probably be our last question as we are coming short on time. Um, but I think we should go down the list and just give our best piece of advice for this question. It's what is the best way to figure out what school is best for me? Um, and I think that there are so many different ways that we could answer that question. So as we, um, we are college reps, we all went to school. Um, what was the best thing that was the most helpful for you? And we'll just go down, um, we'll start with Rachel and then I'll, I'll wrap it up. Oh man, the best school for you. It's gonna be a process. And so um, when I started my process, um, I wanted the bumper sticker school, so I'm old. And when I was doing this process, um, it was cool to put the bumper sticker on your car. So now that's probably like putting a sticker on your laptop or something. Um, but uh, for me, I wanted to play college athletics. And so I wanted that name brand school, but that's not where I ended up. Um, I had no idea what I wanted to major. So that what I wanted to major in. So that made my search really difficult. Um, and athletics were a big part of my search. Um, money ended up being a big part of my search. And so I went on athletic recruiting trips um, and um, my family played a big role. Um, in the end, I ended up going to a school that I didn't want to go to. Um, there's still a sign in my bedroom that I, back home where I grew up and it says, you're going to this school and you're proud. And the reason that I ended up going there, it was a small private liberal arts institution, a D2 school, small and private. And I had a full ride there, a combination of athletic and academic money. And so money made the decision for my family and I. Um, and it ended up being a fantastic um, experience and decision. Um, but my, my way of getting there was not traditional. <laughs> And I had to have that mantra that it was gonna be okay. Um, and it was only an hour and 15 minutes away from home when I really wanted to go far away from home. So um, it's, it's gonna be a process for you to figure that out. And even at the end of your, your senior year, you might not feel like you're headed in the right direction, but everyone's process is gonna let, uh, look a little bit different. So Sarah, go ahead and share yours. 
I think that the the way that I chose what school I was going to, I did everything wrong. I applied to one school, so I got into that school and that's where I went. Um, I think the best way though to figure out what is best for you is really to just put feelers out there, talk to people, talk to your admissions counselors, talk to people in the field that you're interested in and see where they went to school and see what resources they um, appreciated. Um, but yeah, so I know that we are, we are coming really close on time. So Ashley or Catherine, do you have anything to add? I think that was perfect. Couldn't agree more that it is a process and just to um, really uh, also visit, if you're able to visit <laughs> in the times of a global pandemic, if you're able to visit, I highly recommend visiting even after being accepted because it's a completely different lens um, from coming in and um, visiting as a um, current student. So we we'll just kind of add that as well. Absolutely. Well, thank you all so, so much for your time. Um, on behalf of all of the schools here, we are so grateful that you let us talk to you today. And if you need anything else, please reach out to us. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, um, Sarah and Rachel and Ashley and Catherine. That was a, a great presentation, a wonderful way for juniors to get this um, extra start to college. I want to remind all the attendees on the call today um, that you will get a quick survey. Um, when you close out the window, you're going to get a four question survey that we hope that you'll answer to give us the feedback um, about this adventure and this process of the virtual exploration. Um, we do have plenty of more sessions on the CACRO website, so feel welcome to go out as you've been reminded a few times today to take a look at those and the website is the uh, CACRO CACRAO.org, and the same with the recordings. All of these panels and information sessions will be recorded and will be available within about a week on the CACRO website. And it'll be pretty obvious when you join our site to make sure you know where to find them. So thank you all for being with us today, and um, I hope you have a, a great rest of your journey as you're prepared for college, and thank you, presenters.